Issei Jingu is one of Japan's most ancient shrines. Its expansive precinct covering 5,500 hectares encompasses 125 shrines where Shinto deities are honored. Drawing more than 10 million visitors a year, Issei Jingu is Japan's most important Shinto shrine, both officially and in reality. In October 2013, there was a ceremonial transfer of deities between sanctuaries that happens once every 20 years. This solemn ritual has been observed for 1,300 years, upheld by each generation of artisans and local residents. Mass pilgrimage to the shrine began a few hundred years ago. The Issei Jingu pilgrimage launched Japan's first tourism boom. For centuries, a visit to Issei Jingu has been a once-in-a-lifetime experience. More recently, it has gained a reputation as a power spot. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is Issei Jingu. We'll look at rituals performed since ancient times and see what makes this shrine a focal point of Japanese religion. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. I've come to Issei Jingu, which is a Shinto shrine in Mie Prefecture. In fact, it's perhaps the most famous Shinto shrine in the whole of Japan. This is actually my second time here. The last time was probably over 20 years ago. I don't remember it being quite so crowded then. I do remember being really impressed by the sheer scale of the place. And also, despite being over a thousand years old, how clean it all is. You come in through that big wooden gate over there called a tori, and over this wooden bridge which crosses a sacred river called the Isuzugawa. And then on the other side of the bridge is the sacred domain, which is separate from the everyday world. And this is the Isuzugawa, the sacred river that I just mentioned. And this spot is for the ritual washing of hands. There's something like this at every Shinto shrine, and it's customary to purify yourself before entering the sacred precinct. Normally, they provide a basin with water in it. Here at Issei, they use the waters of the river. It used to be that people immersed themselves completely in the river. Thankfully, these days, you just purify your hands and mouth. And I shall just do that in the same way that everybody else here does. There we go. That's how it's done. OK, let's get started with a closer look at Issei Jingu. Shinto is the ancient, indigenous religion of Japan. The Japanese have historically held the natural world in awe and have honored a countless number of nature deities. These spirits of nature are honored at places that are typically called shrines in English. There are said to be more than 80,000 such shrines in Japan, and presiding over them all is Issei Jingu in Mie, a shrine of great antiquity that even features in Japanese mythology. A third of the city of Issei is covered by forest. Most of the 125 shrines that are collectively called Issei Jingu are located in these woods. Deities of forces of nature, including the sun, water, wind, and earth, are honored here along with deities associated with food, shelter, and clothing. Let's tour Issei Jingu. It's divided into two main areas, referred to as the inner and outer shrines. This is the main sanctuary of the inner shrine. Enshrined here is Amaterasu Omikami, the Shinto sun deity. Of all Shinto deities, Amaterasu is the most revered. People are not permitted to enter the sanctuary where Amaterasu dwells. They must honor the deity from a distance. The shrine buildings, which can only be glimpsed beyond their fenced enclosure, are made of bare cypress wood in a very ancient Japanese architectural style. The posts are not set on a foundation 
but inserted directly into holes in the ground. The style is simple and symmetrical with a raised floor. Instead of nails, the structure is assembled almost entirely with skillful joinery. About six kilometers away from the inner shrine is the outer shrine. The main sanctuary of the outer shrine is dedicated to Toyo Uke no Omikami, a deity who bestows blessings of shelter, clothing and food, especially rice, Japan's staple crop. This deity is enshrined here because it has the role of supplying Amaterasu Omikami with food. Now let's look at a typical day at Isejingu, behind the scenes where the public are normally not allowed. 550 people, mainly Shinto priests, work at Isejingu in service to the deities. Morning at the shrine begins with offerings of food. Shinto priests, who have ritually purified themselves, light a fire in the traditional way to cook rice. According to records, this ritual meal began 1,500 years ago and has been observed every single day since. Inside this box made of cypress wood are seafood, such as red sea bream and dried skipjack tuna, as well as kombu seaweed, along with vegetables, fruit, rice, sake, and salt. The food offering is carried to Mikeden, a building in the outer shrine, which serves as the banquet hall of the deities. Amaterasu Omikami comes here from the inner shrine to eat meals. This ritual is performed twice per day in the morning and evening, reflecting the old Japanese custom of eating two meals per day. Other than the seafood, the ingredients used in the food offering are supplied by the shrine itself. This sacred rice paddy is used exclusively by Ise Jingu. More than 10 different types of rice are grown here in order to ensure a crop, whether it's a dry or a wet year. Seasonal vegetables and fruit are also grown. Today, carrots are being harvested. Workers at the shrine are assisted by local women. The salt is also produced by the shrine. Sea water is filtered through salt pans. Then the water is boiled off to leave salt crystals. It's an ancient method done entirely by hand. Through practices like these, Ise Jingu maintains the ancient ways of honoring the Shinto deities. I've come about a kilometer from that big wooden gate at the entrance and the grounds here just seem to go on forever. Over there on my left is the main sanctuary of the inner shrine. There's this lush grove around me here of these Japanese cedar and cypress trees and come look over here. This one must be at least 300 years old, I would think. You really do get the feeling that you're in a kind of sacred place. I'm going to be talking to Mr. Masaki Tsumehashi, who works here. Thank you for being with us today. And what are some of the activities that you have here? Could you explain a few, perhaps? Uh, certainly. There are a series of rituals to pray for a good harvest, with a festival of thanksgiving in mid-October called Kan Namesai being perhaps the most important. And there are about 1,500 other rituals in a given year. 1,500? That works out at like, something like five a day. At the outer shrine, meals are offered to the deities both in the morning and in the evening. There's the harvest festival I just mentioned, and another festival every six months called the Tsukinamisai. At the various auxiliary shrines, there are lots of other rituals, so about 1,500 in total, performed for over a thousand years. That's really quite amazing that you can continue all of that tradition for so long. Thank you very much. In 2013, a rather unusual ceremony took place. In Japanese, it's called Shikinen Sengu, and it means a ritual transfer 
of the sanctuaries. Essentially, the deities, or some of them, get to move to a new home. Let's see what it's all about. In October 2013, Ise Jingu had its most important ritual, Shikinen Sengu. Once every 20 years, exact replicas of Ise Jingu's two main sanctuaries are built, and the deities are transferred to the new ones. In pitch darkness, the sacred object in which the deity resides is draped in white silk and moved to the new residence. This ritual expresses the wish for the deity to be eternally youthful and to always have a clean, pure dwelling place. And since sanctuaries are built of bare cypress timbers in the ancient style, they weather quickly. That's why the transfer is performed at regular intervals, while the existing structures are still in good condition. Two lots sit side by side, and the main sanctuaries alternate between left and right. This is how it's been done for the past 1,300 years. Preparations for the transfer ritual begin eight years in advance. The Kiso region of Nagano is famous for the quality of its Japanese cypress trees. More than 10,000 trees are required because new homes must be built for many deities. 300 years ago, Kiso was established as a place that would supply cypress wood for these periodic rebuildings. On this day, two very special trees are to be felled. They will be used to make the container for the sacred object at each of the two main sanctuaries. This time, the sacred logs are being supplied by 300-year-old trees. They have been chosen for their wide, straight, largely not free trunks. Felling of the trees is done with axes by local foresters following ancient protocol. Chief Lumberjack, Noboru Tanaka, has been teaching the traditional skills for a very long time. He is already a veteran of two Issei Jingu sanctuary transfers. By using a crew with both veteran and young lumberjacks to fell the sacred trees, the traditions are passed on. This generational changing of the guard is said to be one reason why the sanctuary is rebuilt at 20-year intervals. An hour after the axis starts swinging, this tree falls exactly where planned. Then the sacred logs make the journey to Issei past large crowds of well-wishers. The sanctuary structures are not the only thing remade every 20 years. The trappings and treasures are also recreated. About 700 different types of item and 1,500 items in all. This is a sacred mirror, a treasure made for the everyday use of the deity. It's an alloy of copper and tin. This wooden statue of a horse has a saddle decorated with mother of pearl inlay and lacquering, as well as fine gold work. It's a masterpiece of superb craftsmanship. The treasures are made by the finest artisans of the day. Each one is made new each time, using existing blueprints. This time, Takeo Uneno is overseeing the making of the treasures. He carefully copies the old blueprint, the slightest mistake, and he starts from scratch again. Well, of course, we do feel the pressure of what we are making. We feel the weight on our shoulders as we draw. Making the blueprint this way sends a message to the artisans. You just can't hand over a photocopy and say to an artisan, good luck, do your best. 
Doing that wouldn't inspire them. We need to all work together to make something worthy of its sacred purpose. Shikinen Sengu is a ritual of recreation repeated every 20 years. The honoring of the deities, along with the preservation of traditional skills, has gone on for 1,300 years. A lot of old materials left over after the rebuilding, and remarkably, none of it gets wasted. For example, the large posts of the main sanctuary are always reused in the shrine's giant tori gates. Sometimes material gets shipped to other shrines around Japan, which need to renovate their buildings. Lumber from Isejingu is prized by other shrines, and occasionally entire shrine buildings and tori gates are handed on to shrines whose premises have been destroyed in earthquakes. This happened a couple of times in the 1990s, once in Kobe and once in a place called Okshiri in Hokkaido. Here we have a storehouse for Ise Jingu's rice harvest. It also serves as a home for one of the deities, of course. The smell of the fresh cypress is absolutely wonderful. The style of architecture of this storehouse is the same as the main sanctuary of the inner shrine. You'll see that the elevated floor is a distinguishing feature, and that goes back to the style of architecture of prehistoric Japan. If you look up there, you'll see a slight gap in the joints. The reason for that is it's going to be another 20 years until the next rebuilding, and during that time, this magnificent thatched roof here is going to get heavier and heavier as it gets exposed to the rain and snow. And those gaps are to compensate for that. So, in fact, it's master craftsmanship. OK, let's move on now and take a look at the role that Ise Jingu has played in the lives of the Japanese people over the centuries. The origins of Ise Jingu go back about 2,000 years. The Nihon Shoki, an ancient chronicle of Japan, records that in the year 4 BC, Amaterasu Omikami took a liking to Ise with its bountiful ocean and mountains and settled there. Initially, Amaterasu Omikami was the tutelary deity of the imperial family. Only they were permitted to make the pilgrimage to Ise Jingu. From around the 13th century, when the samurai had political control, Ise Jingu was recast as the shrine that protected all Japan. It enjoyed great favor from the warrior class. But as Japan plunged into anarchy in the 15th century, the situation changed. Ise Jingu became embroiled in the chaos of war. Its land was ruined, its economic base destroyed. After 130 years or so of hardship, the shrine's fortunes rebounded in the 17th century. With Japan now at peace, Ise Jingu sought to revive itself. Priests were dispatched across the country to promote the shrine among farmers and townspeople. At the time, the average person was not allowed to travel freely or even spend time away from their community. But a religious pilgrimage was an exception. Special permission was granted to visit Buddhist temples or Shinto shrines. The missionary priests succeeded and Ise Jingu became a popular pilgrimage site. Farmers came to pray for bountiful harvests. Samurai came to pray for peace. One in six Japanese are said to have made at least one trip to Ise Jingu in their lifetime. This picture shows how lively the shrine was in those days. People even brought their dogs. The boom in pilgrimages to Ise Jingu gave rise to new customs. For Japan's common people, a trip to Ise was a huge expense. So a system sprang up, groups pooled their savings, and one person would go to Ise Jingu as a representative of the entire group. In due course, though, pilgrims began to enjoy free lodging, food, and boat passages. Those unable to go to Ise would offer them money as a way to share in the journey. 
helping pilgrims was seen as a way to make merit. Eventually, it became customary for Issei pilgrims to carry a ladle. Along the road, they would hold out this ladle to collect arms. At Issei, their destination, priests would give the pilgrims room and board and take them to see the local sites. They were not unlike modern-day tour guides. As more amenities became available to make the travel easy, pilgrims began taking side trips on their way back from Issei. This launched Japan's first tourism boom. A best-selling book of this era, called Tokaido Chu Hizakurige, tells the story of two men from Edo, as Tokyo was then called, journeying to Issei. Woodblock prints of the sites along the route served as travel posters and guides. By the 1920s, Issei had its own railway station. With travel easier than ever, the number of shrine visitors topped 7 million in 1939. But the outbreak of the Second World War plunged Issei Jingu into crisis once more. In 1949, the sanctuary transfer had to be called off due to post-war chaos, including economic problems. It was decided to delay the shrine's most important ritual indefinitely. However, a fundraising campaign to rebuild Japan from Issei up was launched by Japan's business sector. Four years later, the transfer was finally able to proceed. Over the centuries, Issei Jingu has survived more than one crisis, in large part due to the many Japanese who have venerated and visited it. Major shrines and temples in Japan generally have a shopping area right outside the shrine precinct, and this is Oharaimachi, which is Issei Jingu's shopping area. You can see it attracts quite a lot of people. And centuries ago, too, it would have looked quite similar to this, with restaurants and inns bustling with people who'd come to pay their respects to the deities and all carrying their trademark ladles. Although, I suspect these days, filling up your ladle with coins is probably not quite so easy. Now, this is what Issei is famous for. It's called Ankoromochi and it's got sticky rice cake in the bottom and sweet bean paste on top and these are a little difficult to get out of the case it's sticky and sweet but not too sweet it's actually very nice in the old days they wouldn't last for the journey home so people would have to eat them on the spot so in the old days what did people take home from Ise? Well, one popular gift was this. What do you think that is? It's sold in little packs like this and larger containers as well. It's herbal stomach medicine. And it's been around now for five, six hundred years. It was a very popular item back in those days, and it's still around now. People would put it in a little case like this. You open the lid and put your medicine in there. People believed back in those days that medicine from Issei could work miracles and that was no doubt one of the reasons why it was so popular. People have come to Issei over the centuries for lots of different reasons. Let's take a look. Over the past few years, power spots have been heavily featured in the Japanese media. Power spots are thought to have an invisible supernatural power to give people physical or mental refreshment. One such place is Issei Jingu. It's 10.30 p.m. in Shinjuku, Tokyo. This overnight express coach is bound for Issei Jingu. It will be back in Tokyo in 24 hours at the end of a whirlwind round trip of 1,000 kilometers. Most of the passengers are women. I went in April, May and June. This is my fourth time. 8.30 the next morning, the bus arrives at Issei Jingu. This tour package allows only five hours in Issei. Since the precinct is so huge, the pilgrims head straight to their preferred spots. 
Some relax by walking through the tranquil forest. Some are trying to feel the spiritual energy at a power spot. Hugging the trees is seen as a way to absorb power from them. It's not a tour exactly. You can spend the hours any way you like. I feel at peace here. The feeling I get here helps me work and live my life with a positive attitude. In 2013, Ise Jingu was in the news because of the sanctuary transfer. Lots of people wanted to make a pilgrimage there simply to soak up the spiritual benefits. At Ise Jingu, you get the sense that everyone is equal as a human being. You can really relax, let go and be yourself and gain a new sense of inner purpose. Maybe that's why Issei Jingu, as one of the most important shrines in Japan, attracts all these people. Issei Jingu, a Shinto shrine that's been a place to pray for good harvests and peace since ancient times. And today it remains a source of spiritual comfort and inspiration. It's been 20-something years since I was here last, and to be quite honest, I'd forgotten just how special this place is. This whole forest going back a thousand years and more, even the crunch of the gravel path walking through it, and of course the beauty of the shrine buildings themselves. The whole thing is like a real breath of fresh air in every possible sense of the word, and I can totally understand why over 10 million people came here in 2013 alone. There's a popular belief or legend about Issei Jingu. People say that when the main sanctuary is on the right, then the harvests are good, but the economy is bad. And when the main sanctuary is on the left, then it's the other way around, and the harvests are not so good, but the economy gets better. Well, the economy in Japan has been in deflation for the last 20 years when the sanctuary was on the right, and it's just moved to the left. I'm sure there must be a lot of people hoping that things are about to take an upturn. I'll see you again next time. Forty percent of the cars in Japan are K cars. Small and lightweight, these vehicles are loved by families and companies alike. We explore the unique evolution of this made-in-Japan concept. <laughs> 